no plants in 75 feet, and where this stuff is put on, 5%. It also increases stock strength dramatically and reduces moisture use by a third. So, John? Thanks, Bob. I'm really, uh, really glad to be here and uh, appreciate the uh, invitation. They glad to be here on, on your farm and I uh, hope this information will be uh, beneficial. Tell you brought rain that's done this month ago. <laughs> no, I didn't bring the rain. Um, our, uh, A little background on Redox. Uh, I've worked at, at Redox for going on 24 years now. We focus on uh, six key areas, uh, crop quality, uh, plant stress, soil salinity, yield and nitrogen management, uh, moisture management, and root development. Today our discussion will uh, revolve around yield and uh, a bit of uh, plant stress. First of all, um, Let's uh, revisit briefly the composition of soil. And uh, we, we tend to jump to on the, uh, the mineral content of sand, silt, and clay. But what you may not be aware of is the element in greatest abundance in the earth's crust is actually silicon. So why are we worried about it in, in plant nutrition? Well, for the following reason. It, uh, it is showing that it, is, it is increases in plants, it brings a number of benefits, including uh, some physiological benefits, as well as some mechanical and uh, benefits in the soil. The, uh, of course, we have the essential plant nutrients, and, and silicon is not considered an essential plant nutrient. Rather, it is a category of what's referred to as beneficial plant nutrient. Well, one of the common forms of, of silicon in the soil, earth crust, is calcium silicate. Now, calcium silicate is insoluble. Okay, so it cannot be taken up in the plant in, this, in that form. Rather, the form the plant contains can take up is called monosilicic acid. Now what we find is this monosilicic acid is highly available in virgin soils, often in soils that have high uh, biological activity. And so there's a, there's a correlation to a healthier soil and better silicon nutrition. Well, what's the role of the, the calcium and the calcium silicate and the silicic acid? Well, there are three key benefits from calcium in, in, a, in a cropping condition. First, of course, soil structure. Second is cell wall integrity. And that's where silicon, I'm going to explain in a moment here, plays a key role. And then often overlooked is the benefit of calcium is for root growth. What research is showing is calcium and silicon, when they're uh, assimilated in the plant together, uh, what happens is the cell wall, of course, calcium is critical to the relative strength of that cell wall. So when the silicon nutrition is higher, calcium is deposited in the cell wall, it becomes more organized. It appears more like a brick wall rather than a rock wall. So it, it, it appears to enhance the, uh, the organization of calcium in that cell wall. And with that in mind, it, the, the calcium silicon must, uptake must occur prior to cell development. After that cell is fully formed, you simply can't, uh, can't provide that benefit, which comes to the, aspect of the discussion of timing we'll get to in a moment. So the, the product I'd like to discuss is called Mainstay SI. It is a reactive nutrient product that is high in calcium and silicon. In fact, it's 10% calcium and 22% silicon. It's a, it's a liquid product. 
The product is derived from calcium silicate, because as I mentioned earlier, calcium silicate is not quite available. It goes through a reaction process, and we use a process that's unique to redox called microencapsulation, where we can react that and protect that calcium and silicon from undesirable um, reactions prior to uptake in the plant. And the mode of action of MINGS DSI is twofold. First, it, it strengthens cell wall, and secondly, reduces oxidative stress. I mentioned the importance of timing. Redox is, has used this product for a number of years in specialty crops, particularly in fruits and vegetable crops. And we can tell you very specifically timing and rates and how to utilize it to improve shelf life and produce and viability of produce. When it comes to commodity crops like soybeans, corn, uh, wheat, cotton, and so on, we are relatively new at this. So I'll, I, as we discuss this, I will share some of, of the timing and rates that we're using. But I'll mention that we are fortunate that right now we have at least, I was counting as I was sitting here, at least 12 replicated trials uh, in the Midwest on corn and at least 12 on soybeans and corn. Different rates, different timings. So the, the idea is by November, December, we'll have a really good handle on what is going to perform best with this material. Well, Bob referenced uh, a positive experience we had right here in this farm last year. Again, I'd like to thank Dave Swartz for uh, taking the leap to analyze this. And what we did is, I say we, literally, what Dave did, is he applied one quart per acre of the main SSI and V8 stage in the foliar application. What we, we, all we evaluated in this trial was yield. What came back is, is we saw just above a 30 bushel increase in yield here on the farm. Now, you could, when you look at the kernels and the, the, uh, the picture here in this setting, is probably going to be different for us. So you can actually visibly see differences in the, uh, the cobs and the kernel. That, of course, 30 bushel is very exciting. Well, we also, we also know from our own experience, you've got to replicate this a number of times. Because what we're looking for is consistent return on investment. Very, very important. Thus, the trial work we're doing. And I should mention, uh, many, many, many growers have gone out and split fields and will be doing their own evaluation this year as well, which is, which is great. Okay, um, I'd like to talk about what I would describe as molecular research on mainstream SI. We have very good evidence on special crops on, on effect, but we wanted to understand more in depth what's happening internally in the plant with the use of the product. And first of all, what we found, and this is very interesting, is when applied to the crop, and this was a this was a study when they used three three foliar applications, they increased carbon by 19% and reduced oxygen in the plant by 24%. Now when the researchers shared that with you at first, I didn't quite understand what they're saying. What they're saying is, is you have less airspace in the plant. And that airspace can cause oxidation. Just like you take a piece of fresh fruit, put it on the counter, it's gonna, it's gonna go bad on you. So a denser plant has let greater potential to uh, resist various types of stress. Into the trained eye, you can, you can actually see this with electron microscope uh, pictures. So that was very interesting. And, and that, in fact, kind of uh, help reinforce some of the benefits we, we've seen in the field. Next, 
They said, well, the, the pure carb thickness is increased. Of course, that's what's protecting the, the embryo in, in the plant and crop. That's reduced moisture loss. Higher solids. So there's less moisture to lose in the plant itself, which explains some of the drought tolerance benefits we've seen. Increased lycopene. Lycopene is a very strong antioxidant. Increased vitamin C, another very strong antioxidant. In addition, we did studies. We wanted to compare our, this mean CSI product to other forms of silicon. So as we compared to potassium silicate, what we saw, not only important differences in plant growth, but if, when we looked at a key, a key uh, uh, enzyme, chitinase, the levels are much higher when we use the mean state SI. So clearly there's a correlation to calcium and the silicon being taken up in the plant. So the concept of oxidative stress was discussed earlier, and I'd like to discuss this briefly because this is key to the, the efficacy of the new CSI and silicon nutrition. Plants naturally produce oxidative compounds. Oxidative compounds um, in, in all living species are just a natural byproduct of living and, and growing. These oxidative compounds, however, when they accumulate, are to cause a lot of damage to cells. And when that damage gets to the point where it's breaking down the cell, that's where we start to see a lot of economic loss in the plant. Fortunately, plants also produce what are called antioxidants. And antioxidants neutralize these oxidants in the plant. So we could say a definition of a, a, a strong and healthy plant would be one where the antioxidant production and oxidants are in balance. Well, as it turns out, that there, there are four products that Redox manufactures that we refer to as antioxidant products. In other words, we apply them to a plant and we can measure much higher antioxidant levels in the plant after the application. And the main stay aside is, is one of those products. Very good. Um, where we're at right now is, is we we have some positive things. I think I think we all agree in our group observance from our field trials. We will see some nice little responses this year. Don't want to jump to any conclusions, but it's looking looking good. Um, Another benefit of, of increased calcium and silicon is, is root water uptake, the hydraulic condensants. So we end up having is you actually get better potassium nutrition with the use of NSTSI. And of course we, we observe, have observed this in, in that we have irrigated crops where they reduce their irrigation inputs and dry land crops where they tolerate drought better. Another thing that we've not anticipated as we study the main CSI is the increase in endolysine acid. There's a much higher content, and that of course is better cell division. Now early on in fruit and vegetable crops, we saw better fruit size, significantly better. We always correlated that increase in spruce size to reduce plant stress. It turns out that that may be true, but the increase in endolysine acid early season while we're applying the product, we're getting greater cell uh, production, cell division. Very good. Bob referred to uh, an observational benefit for green snap. And the little story behind this is Bob had, had said, yeah, I observed in 2017 where some foliar sprays drifted on some others that they didn't have as much green snap. And I said, well, Bob, I think, I think, I don't think that's going to be the case. Didn't I, Bob? I said, Bob, I, 
understanding calcium is so, uh, uh, they, they are flown and mobile. They move up the xylem, they don't move down or flow. Um, as I said, a foliar, foliar application of this product, I, I'm, I am not sure that could provide that benefit. Well, sure enough, um, we got a call about well, two or three weeks ago, and uh, Bob said, you know, we've got a treated field, surrounded by untreated fields, and uh, we estimated, what, 5-15% green snap, or lower, versus, I, I said 80 to 90 percent, but in that ballpark. Um, it was it was pretty convincing. It was pretty interesting. So we're going to be looking at that as well. Um, and that was just one core application at I want to say E6. Is that right? Oh, don't worry. Of the grower that applied that anyway. It was. Uh, is during the vegetative state of the world. Then over the weekend, um, Continuum Ag is doing a number of uh, replicated trials for us, and they sent this over, and this is a one quart application at B80. They got 10 bushels, a 10 bushel yield increase. Uh, so we'll take that, because that's definitely a good return on investment. But it's not as good as day age 30. But they got the tip back. What's that? The tip back. Oh. Let's try what? Oh. Well, and Dave's saying, well, he didn't have the dry weather and so on and so forth. But in theory, the more adverse the condition, there should be greater separation. Okay. So I don't know. Uh, the question comes up well, is Dave doing something? this synergistic with this? The answer is very likely yes. You say, what could those two things be? Offhand, I don't know, but I would say a, a better root system probably is going to respond better. Possibly better soil biology is going to make this respond better. So we will learn as we go forward because there will be a lot of data coming out here in the, in the next few months. Yes? The, the question is, we're not, we're not finished with this yet. So, no, this is just a visual right now. Yeah, so we'll see how, we'll see how it finishes. That's, that's a very good point. Not that yet. We've got a couple months. His, your point is well taken. You need to look at the kernel, even the nutrient content, so on and so forth. So, so we're we're we'll take we'll take the benefit from now. We'll see how this plays out. Very good. In summary, um, I will tell you that um, this technology, this calcium silicon technology, the main CSI in specialty crop, from citrus to strawberries to almonds to apples, has been very consistently consistent and long as the timing is right. I think the potential is good to develop a, a consistent ROI of commodity crops like wheat, corn, soybeans, and so on. But we're in the learning stage. Um, so rather than wheat data just coming off now, which was very good, and uh, we look forward to, to sharing, disseminating this information over the next few months. And I'll just, uh, I'll just reiterate that the benefits on crops where we have more experience are, are a very good. Well, now I'll take any questions if you have any. Yes? So the question is timings and soybean. Um, we want to err on the side of the herd. Um, that's what our experience has been. We actually do have quite a bit of experience in dry beans, garbanzo, so on and so forth. 
um, fresh market legumes that are, that are harvested for tannering and so on. And what, what they're, what the feedback there is they like multiple line applications through full bloom. And that, that's where they think they're finding they're getting, they're retaining more beans. They're retaining more. It's, it's not that hard to set more, it's keeping them in, in size. So I would just say, you know, very low rates earlier are going to be the trend. Our data with, with testing this year will we'll confirm that because we've done just one application. We're doing multiple applications on some trials. We'll know a whole lot more about soybeans in a couple of months. Yeah, Bob will, Bob will have access to all that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, John. One thing we saw that was probably most interesting was that we saw it out here on Saturday. And a fourth grade leaf got very thick and very soft. And then we could feed it a couple more things through it. And uh, pipe parade is still somewhat the same thing. But uh, Dan Scott used to be in our group. Dan studied under a fellow that was um, on the Manhattan Project with Einstein. And then formulated some products that were part silica, maybe one or one and a half percent. And he believed when you had those leaves were catching more sunlight energy, so it might be akin to whether you're working with 110 or 220 electricity as far as doing work with a plant. So is it providing energy to other systems in the plant that then have those systems be much more active and much more effective? and what they're doing. That's what we're trying to find out. Okay, next speaker, Tom Wood. He's up from Idaho, uh, 